counting molecules by the gram. So we're talking about counting atoms. Um, we can also count molecules, which are groups of atoms. For elements, we used the molar mass. That was the mass of one mole of atoms of that element. Well, the molar mass of a compound is a similar idea. It is the molar, the, um, the mass of one mole of molecules or formula units of that compound. At the end of chapter five, we talked about the formula mass. And we looked at the, the chemical formula and the numbers on the periodic table, and we just added everything up. It's the same idea here, except the unit's going to be gram instead of atomic mass units. Molecules and formula units. There is a difference between these two terms. Um, I'm not going to try to trick you with that difference, but I'm going to try to use the terms correctly so I don't want you to be confused when you hear them. Ionic compounds don't have individual molecules. They have ions, and the ions are attracted to all of the neighbors around themselves. And so you could think of a, a salt crystal, like in your shake, uh, salt shaker at home, that little, those little salt crystals. You could think about each of those crystals as really being a molecule, right? Because it, does, it contains ions, but it doesn't have any smaller molecules in there. It's just alternating ions. So the, the word molecule, the concept of molecule, really doesn't apply to ionic compounds. So we call it a formula unit. It's the formula of the compound. It's the smallest ratio of cations and anions. So what we do is we convert between the mass of a compound and the moles of a compound, and then we calculate the number of molecules or formula units from that number of moles. The same process that we just did with atoms, but now the molar mass is just a little, um, little different. The molar mass of a compound in grams per mole is numerically equal to the formula mass of the compound in atomic mass units. So just like the molar mass of an element is the same number as the atomic mass, we just changed the unit. Same thing for the molar mass of a compound and the formula mass. OK, so uh, formula mass is still relatively new because we just covered that on Tuesday. Let's calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. Mrs. Jones, yes? Did you say that the formula mass is equal to the molar mass of that uh, compound? The formula mass and the molar mass are the same number. Okay. The unit is different. Mm -hmm. The formula mass has units of atomic mass units, and the molar mass has units of grams. So to find the formula mass of this, we're going to find the atomic mass of each element and figure out how many atoms of each element are in there. So how many calcium atoms in one unit? Two. I mean, one. One. Phew. OK. So one calcium, and we look up calcium on the periodic table. One atom of calcium weighs 40.08 AMUs. And how many atoms of nitrogen are in this formula? Two. two. Because this is like the shrink wrap, and there's two packages. Each package has one nitrogen atom. In two packages, we have two nitrogen atoms, and, and those have a mass of 14.01 atomic mass units. And how many oxygens? Six. Six oxygens. OK, so 40.08 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16, 164.1. The unit is atomic mass units. That equals the mass of one formula unit. I'm saying formula unit because this is an ionic compound and it technically doesn't have molecules. Any questions about that? 
Now, what's the molar mass of that compound? One hundred and sixty four point one grams. Isn't that neat? That one was easy. We did the hard work up here. We don't use formula masses very much, but we do use molar masses a lot. Well, if you didn't know what the formula mass was, how would you calculate the molar mass? You do the exact same calculation, but instead of atomic mass units, it's grams. And at the end, you say that is equal to one mole of that substance. We also sometimes express that 164.1 grams per mole. Either way is absolutely fine. Any questions? So we can use the molar mass to convert between grams and moles of a compound. Find the number of moles in a 2 point, oh, sorry, 22.5 gram sample of dry ice. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Well, we're given a number here, and we're asked to find moles. So we're given grams, we're asked to find moles. We can do that in one conversion factor. So we've got 22.5 grams of CO2. And then I'm going to multiply that by moles per gram of CO2 so that the grams cancel out. The relationship between grams and moles, whether it's a compound or an element, is the molar mass. And you need the periodic table for that. Here, because this is a compound, we're going to have to actually calculate it. And I would encourage you to write it down in the corner of your paper. I know some of you like to just type it through in your calculator, but then if you make a mistake, you're not going to know what it is. So we've got one carbon, one mole of carbon, and two moles of oxygen in one mole of carbon dioxide. And so that comes out to be 44.01 grams is equal to one mole of CO2. That's the conversion factor we need to go between grams and moles. So one mole weighs 44.02 grams. There's no remembering, should I multiply, should I divide? The units tell you what to do. 22.5 divided by 44.01. And we come up with, uh, this one should have five significant figures. Five. It's 0.5. It should have three significant figures. Uh, 0.511. And the unit is moles of CO2. Can you have less than one mole of substance? Sure you can. You can have less than a dozen donuts. You can have half a dozen or a third of a dozen. You can have less than a mole. Any questions? Let's calculate the number of moles in 1.18 grams of NO2. We're given grams and we're asked for moles. Grams to moles, moles to grams, it's always just one step. 1.18 grams of NO2, and then my little path here is grams to moles, so I'm going to put moles up here and grams down there. The grams cancel out. Where do I find the numbers? On the periodic, On the periodic table, thank you. So I've got one mole of nitrogen in a mole of nitrogen dioxide. So that's 14.01 grams for the nitrogen. There are two oxygens in here. So I've got two times the molar mass of oxygen. 
42.01 grams is equal to one mole of this compound. Calculating molar masses is a very, very important skill. And it really isn't that hard once you see what you're doing. So now one mole, 46.01 grams. So it's going to be 1.18 times 1 divided by 46.01. Um, this one should also have three significant figures because of my starting number. So my calculator says 0, 0.0. Those leading zeros don't count as significant figures. 2, 5, 6. The next digit is a 4, so I round down, and that is, no, not grams, moles, NO2. The grams went away. I've got moles left. Any questions? This is something that takes some practice. Practice on the homework. Practice on um, there's extra problems in the book. And if you're not coming up with the right answer, get on YouTube and watch me do it again. And you can pause and stop and start and stop and start um, and watch it over and over and over again. That's how I learned how to knit is YouTube videos. You watch it over and over and over again. So if I can learn how to knit, you can learn how to do these calculations, right? You can learn anything. I learned how to fix my dryer on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. If it isn't on YouTube, you probably don't need to know how to do it. Okay, let's do another one. How many water molecules are in a sample of water with a mass of 3.64 grams? Now, this one's a little different, isn't it? The last two problems were how many moles in this many grams. This is how many molecules. Mole and molecule start with the same three letters, but they don't mean the same thing. So the number that I'm given is right there. That's my starting point, 9.9, 3.64 grams. And I want to find out how many molecules. Do I know the mass in grams of a molecule of water? No, I don't. From the periodic table, I can figure out the mass in grams of a mole of water molecules. Do I know how many molecules are in a mole of molecules? Avogadro's number. So the mole is going to be in the middle here. It is possible to do this in one step, um, but the people who like that do not need to be shown how to do it. So I don't want to confuse anybody. This is some, I think I've told you several times about some stuff in science that I think is dumb. This is another thing I think is dumb. Okay, so mole is a short word, right? Four letters. It has an abbreviation. We drop the silent E. Molecule is a long word, no abbreviation. That's dumb. I would prefer to just write out M-O-L-E and use M-O-L as an abbreviation for molecule. But I can't because that's not what everybody else does. And there are some times when you just need to conform to what the group does, and this is one of them. So that being said, 3.64 grams. I'm going to go to moles, and then I'm going to go to molecules. I set up my path. That's really the hardest part, is making a plan, and then we just follow through on the plan. It's the hardest part of making dinner, too. It's coming up with what the heck are we going to make. Once you decide that, it's all downhill. All my units in place. Okay, grams and moles. That's what we just learned how to do today. Periodic table, 
we need to calculate the molar mass of water. There are two hydrogens, so 2 times 1.008 grams, and there's one oxygen, and so we get 18.016 grams is equal to one mole. So one mole, 18.016. Sometimes students are tempted to round these molar masses to the nearest whole number. Don't do it. You don't want your molar masses to limit the precision of your answer, and you can get rounding errors. It's just not a good idea. How many molecules in a mole? Six point oh two two times ten to the twenty third. Six point oh two two times ten to the twenty third. So if that question left you stumped, how many molecules in a mole? Ask yourself how many donuts in a dozen? How many eggs in a dozen? Twelve, right? So 12 is to dozen as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is to mole. I don't know if that'll help you or not. 3.64 divided by 18.016 times 6.022 EE23 equals. Big number, right? Um, it should have three sig figs, so 1.22 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Three point six grams of water is a reasonable amount of water. You could see that. You could hold it in your hand. It's not going to fill the room or anything, but it's a, it's a reasonable amount of water. It should be a ginormous number of molecules. Any questions? My question is, what's next? Hmm, that's six minutes. <laughs>